Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my studio. Stella here. So today I have something very exciting for you. This is the very first episode of Heal with Me. So as a sufferer of chronic pain, I'm doing this to really share with you some of the tips, you know, and tricks I learned to help my mind to deal with pain. I am not a doctor; I am an artist. So whatever treatment plan you're currently having with your doctor or medication regimen, please don't stop. Only paint when you are capable of painting. Again, this is not to cure your pain because you won't. But what this will do, heal with me video, is to show you how to use painting. To train your mind to process the pain that won't stop, and to deal with the pain, so that you can continue to have a quality life. So about two years ago, I started using painting as a way to deal with chronic pain because, unfortunately, I had the luck of being born with hypermobility. Ta da! In case you're wondering what is that, it's, this is also known as double jointedness. It's a recessive genetic trait. So both mom and dad had to carry it, and I just happened to have the luck to inherit the recessive gene. And what it is is that、um, all the tendons throughout my entire body are malformed, so my joints deteriorate. I already have. TMJ problems since two and a half years ago. I'm still being treated for it. That's why my lips are not exactly straight anymore when I talk. I don't have a stroke. In case you're wondering about that, my hip, my neck, C3 vertebrae has shifted because it's not enough of a tendon to hold it in place.、Um, I have hyperextension in my leg, so the list goes on and on and on. All that being said. The pain is 24/7, and it will only get worse as I age. I also ended up having a chronic hormone imbalance since I was in my early teens, like 13 or 14. I think I was diagnosed. That usually progresses into some sort of gynecological issue. In my case, by the time I was in my early 20s, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. It is extremely painful. But then the problem was again. I couldn't stop living my life. I had to fly a lot for my old job, and the stress was very palpable. I was in charge of huge account. I work in fashion、uh, back in the day in my past life. So all that stress, you know, pretty much overrode whatever medication and treatment I was receiving. Next thing I knew, by the time I was twenty-five, my endometriosis. Had developed and progressed into adenomyosis, so now I have two conditions. If you are interested to learn about what these two conditions are and what they actually do, I posted the wiki links down below in the description. Have fun terrifying yourself. All of that being said, chronic pain, twenty four seven, day in and day out, lasts almost twenty years. So I know what pain is. Twenty nineteen, I ended up having to have a hysterectomy. To remove my uterus, and I remember looking at the X-ray、uh, scan. I also did an MRI. It pretty much has spread to my bladder area, and it was pressing against my spine. So I started experiencing difficulty in walking. I was in so much pain. I was at one point. I was put on a 600 milligram prescribed painkiller. For two years, because <laughs> I just couldn't function anymore. I couldn't sleep. The pain was just nonstop. And then, unfortunately, I don't really know what happened. 2021, I had a massive flare up. The major muscle groups of my body、uh, just seized up, and it literally felt like someone was using a blowtorch, literally.、Um, Burning me alive. It lasted for two full weeks, and no amount of painkiller I was put on antibiotics, steroids, everything you can imagine. Nothing stopped the pain. I could no longer walk properly. I couldn't lift my arms, and it was so frightening because at one point I was sleeping with four ice bags literally strapped to my limbs. That was the only way for me to fall asleep, and the only thing that got, really got me through it was the. Small moments here and there, when my right arm wasn't burning, I was able to use it to draw something for myself, to paint something for myself. And in the process of doing that, 
I guess inadvertently I started training my mind to process the pain and deal with it. This is basically my way of showing you, you know, there are ways that you, that you can train your mind to learn to deal with it and process it to make your life more bearable because there's only so much a prescription drug can do. It is what it is. You can only take so many of prescription pills before it blows up your liver. <laughs> In my case, I'm very lucky it didn't happen to me. So I'm actually doing this from a patient, a chronic pain sufferer's perspective. I'm not trying to give you any medical advice. And then just do this painting from time to time to help you out to feel better because it did make me feel better. So the first thing you should do is to decide what would you like to paint with. I am a watercolorist, so I will of course use watercolor paper. This is Arteza, you can easily buy this on Amazon, 140 pound watercolor paper. I will also be using King R watercolor paint set, and these are the brushes I will be using. If painting is new to you, do not worry about it. This is not about how you can paint the most beautiful, perfect painting. This is about how we can objectify your pain, how we can put your pain down on a piece of paper so that your brain can process it. So this is not about you painting as though you are a pro. No, it's not. So don't do that to yourself. Now, take a moment to set up your workstation. I work in watercolor, like I said, so this is my watercolor painting station. You can work in crayons, pen, pencil, pastel, or even oil painting, it doesn't matter. Set it up in a way that makes you feel good. Now, I want you to take a moment to just breathe. Breathe with me to clear your mind. Let's go. Great job. Normally when we paint, we have a subject matter. But for this particular exercise, we are not going to have any subject matter. Continue deep breathing. And as you breathe in, focus on where in your body you feel pain? Is it your neck? Is it your wrist? Is it somewhere deep inside your body that you can't quite exactly pinpoint? Become aware of that sensation. Is it burning? Is it ticklish? Is it tingling? Do you feel warmth or coldness? How do you feel about it? Are you sad? or you don't feel much about it because by this point you're used to it, you know what to expect. Now pick up any brush, pen, any tool you want to use. 
while still focused on that one spot where mine was at. Now aim your brush on any part of the paper and let us let go of that one spot your mind was holding on your body while you start to pay or illustrate what to draw now look at what you have on your paper pick a color that is your favorite I'm picking this beautiful blue almost like a navy blue now look at the paper and let's put down that color as you put down that color don't forget to breathe if you can do a deep inhale exhale do it again inhale exhale now there's something on your paper what does it look like to you? Mine is a blue streak because I'm dealing with watercolor. What about yours? Now, let's do this again. Remember the sensation of pain in that part of your body that wouldn't go away. Now imagine that sensation travels across your arm to the tip of your pen or brush or whatever, pastel, crayons. Inhale. Exhale, put it down. Inhale, push the pain. That's what I meant, push the pain. Exhale, guide it away away this is how mine away looks like I don't know how yours look like in fact share with me post a link in the comments below I love to see them take another deep breath Exhale, relax your muscles. Now let's pick another color. It could be your favorite, or it could be a color that you have absolutely no feeling towards, no expectation. Now, hold it in your hand. I'm not even sure what color I got. Again, no judgment. This painting is for yourself, for your brain to process the pain. It is not about painting the most beautiful object. Now, close your eyes. Bring your mind back to your body. Now become aware of another pain spot is it your shoulder is it your back is it your stomach is it inflamed or does it feel like it's so sore you can't do anything about it now imagine that pain spot that painful painful spot it's the color that's currently on your pen or your brush. 
Take a moment. Imagine it being transferred onto the brush. Focus on the tip of your brush or the nib of your pen. Same thing, doesn't matter. Now, let's wash. Ooh, I got purple. Push it. And what do I mean by wash? You can do this with water too. If you want to get water, just pause the video right now. If you're using watercolor, let's wash. See that? Now, look at it with your eyes. Well, yeah, what else can you look at it with? <laughs> look at how the pain, the ink, the pigment runs. We may not be able to stop the pain. But we can guide our mind to the direction and the reaction or even lack of thereof that we want. For instance, pain coming, we have no control over. Our mind is like the water that runs. We can tell, direct it to where we want it to direct. See that? Let the pain go this way. Let the pigments create a pattern by going that way or coming down. Pain comes in waves, at least for me it does. It's never quite permanent. It feels permanent, but the level of intensity comes in waves. Sometimes it's manageable, sometimes it's not. But the way I see it is, just like what I'm putting down on this piece of paper, you see the darkest part, almost like the most intense pain you ever experience. But if you're able to just lessen your mind a little bit, instead of focus your entire attention to it, how about you lift it up a little bit like this brush? And as you can see, you have this entire area lighter alleviating this painful reaction to it whereas the most intense pain is only here the rest the rest you know you can deal with with medication without doesn't matter and then you can make a choice when you see your pain like this the days you wake up you have very little pain or manageable and then all of a sudden, it progressed to something so dark, so painful. It was so miserable because no one understands you. They don't understand why you keep complaining about it, even though you're trying not to. When that happens, remember all these other moments when the pain was manageable. When the pain basically becomes a very dull drumming at the back of your mind because always remember and this is something I learned from my doctors the intensity of pain cycles through it it will never stay in the same intensity for long but your mind latches onto the greatest intensity and thinks that for the rest of your life this is all you will ever get and you forget about all the other parts of life that are okay that you can continue forward and have hope.
So what if you have layers of pain, different intensities of pain, like this layering of color that you see, that comes and goes, sometimes crisscrossing, sometimes overlapping, sometimes intense, sometimes not. How do you deal with that? Same thing. Let's start with breathing. Go back to the basic. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale as many times as you need and look at what's right in front of you on the paper. What does it look like to you? Probably everything. Probably nothing. You could say, this is the worst painting I've ever done. I have no idea what I just did. You could also say, well, it kind of looks like a blob of something. There's something nice about it, but I wouldn't call this art. You could even say, believe it or not, it kind of looks like an objectification of my pain. Whatever it is, it is what you make it out to be. If this painting right in front of you looks like gibberish, then your pain can also be gibberish. If this painting in front of you looks like suffering, then yes, you are suffering. If this painting in front of you looks like something you can work with, something you can deal with, no matter how bad things get, then you know what? That's exactly how you deal with your pain. It is what you make it out to be. I like Go. Go doesn't make much sense for this painting, but I choose to use Go because it makes sense to me and it is my reaction to the rest of the colors that you currently see on this painting. Pick your favorite color or pick anything that you just love that may not even make sense to add to your current drawing or painting. And let's go. See how it shimmers? Even for that split second when it pushes the pain, the green away, that is a gap between you and the constant pain. Every time when you are aware of your pain, just remember that you are not your pain because how can you see your pain when you are it? This is how you create your response to chronic pain. Don't forget to breathe. Inhale. Exhale.
And when more pain comes, you do it again. Become aware of the sensation of your body. And make a decision. And that's a human experience. And you do it all over again the next day. And who says you can't add some pixie dust, right? Breathe. It's your painting and your life after all. As you paint, continue becoming aware of where your physical pain is. Is it more? Is it less? Has it intensified? Or is it about the same? What about your mind? Where's your mind? Is it focused on the pain? Or is it becoming aware of the pain by focus on the painting? Hmm? Don't forget to breathe. No matter how tough things get, always remember just like the little gold dusts that I love so much in this bowl, you can add it to the life however you want to make it work for you. Now look at your painting. Where is your mind? And where is your pain? Let go.